So today I'm going to show how you can take Geomagic Essentials and use it to break a scanned part up into separate components and then flatten it. We don't do the flattening it uh, in here, but we do have the ability to take the scan and break it into pieces um, that other softwares can then take and flatten. So in order to do that, usually the first thing I do is you'll see that there's a texture to this uh, seat here. I usually will come in here and smooth it and remove a lot of that texture because we don't want to make extra work for the software to try to have to smooth all that out. So in here I can change the slider and I can actually smooth even more in this reduced noise. This does a great job of reducing and just look over the part and I do see that as we reduce noise here let me see if that removes this out takes most of it out you can come in to this small area and just select it and use the D feature tool which will remove that so just look over the part Make sure that it has no more problems on it, and I can even run Mesh Doctor on it. And we've got no problems there. So now what we do is there's two ways of flattening. Some people will flatten from a CAD surface. Some people will flatten directly from a Mesh STL polygon object. Um, it's Most of them, even if they accept a CAD, are actually converting it to a Mesh anyway to flatten it because... Polygons are inherently flat triangles, so all you're doing is just grouping what triangles you want to flatten together, right? Um, but we will kind of, I'll show you where the workflows uh, split off here once we get to that point. But for the first thing that we're going to do is just come over to the model tab and draw curves directly on the surface. So if I come in here and I draw curves, 3D curves on the surface, um, once I draw that curve, if, if I hit escape, it will break that curve into its own separate object. So if I come over here and then I hit uh, escape again, you'll see that I can break the curve into its own separate component there. And if you get instances like this, where that was supposed to be an endpoint, if I hold control, I mean shift, if I hold shift, I can convert that. And if I don't want it to have tangency, I can break tangency by dragging from one, holding and dragging from one side to the other. It will add tangency and take it away. Um, so what I'm going to do is just go around the entire part the same, with the same idea here. Um, I'll just go ahead and fast forward that and not narrate that whole process, but you'll see this happen in Fast Forward. So once you've drawn your patch network out, what you can do from here is come over to these boundary curves, you can create boundaries from curves, just like that. Now once you have these boundaries, you can divide this up into separate pieces. This takes a minute to do because this tool doesn't have every tool that RAP does. So RAP, I can actually take all the different panels and break them out of separate pieces. But what I can do is just show you on a couple of them here, what I can do is I can uh, duplicate this object. And then once I duplicate that object, I can come in here and select the bounded component, reverse selection, and delete everything. So there is one piece. Now if I come over here and I say, and I can rename this piece number one. Now I'll go ahead and hide it. And we can do the same thing here. Uh, duplicate. Rename to two. And we'll go ahead and take two. Select that whole bounded component. Reverse selection. Delete. 
So what I would do is do this for the entire piece, just break them into separate components. And then once I have them in se separate components like this, I'll just go ahead and hide this. I can come over and say auto surfacing, mechanical, I can set really low patch count. So if I just said like 10 or five, something like that, and then hit apply, let the auto surfacer run and create a surface patches. And this will be its own panel that then you can save out. And, uh, and if, if you do run into this where it has, um, you want to fix these manually, you can come in here and really what you can do is drag the patches around and remove those sharp edges that will cause wrinkles. So that's really all you're doing here is making sure that you don't cause any wrinkles in the CAD surface by manipulating those points. And you can hit update and it says now I have two. So it'll take me over to the other one. And I can kind of zoom out and figure out if I just change those angles a little bit and then I hit update, you'll see that I have none. When you're done, you hit the done button and it will continue on fitting CAD surfaces. So now we've created a CAD surface. And what I would do is do this for the whole part as separate pieces. Um, our wrap and design X products will do this a lot faster. Um, but this does have the capability of creating pieces that you can flatten. So you can come in here and again, do the same thing. If I wanted to do like four, I'm just going to try four and see what happens there. I'm actually going to stop, cancel this and run this without extend, no extend and then see what it does. And then if I turn on my patch boundaries, you'll see how accurate those are. And then when you're done, you can take all of these and save them out. So I'll just go ahead and accept that. And then I can save this out as an IGES file. So you can see here, I can save as I can save the mesh files if I wanted to flatten those mesh files separately. Or I could save these as a stepper on iGIS and open them in whatever software that I want to use to flatten. So this is uh, how you can use Geomagic Essentials to flatten a part.